This movie explains how to use the activity dancing factors. Find factors of a number. Here we have the numbers from 1 to 36. And here we have the number 8. 8 is on the dance floor. Who wants to dance with 8? To check, I'll press the dance button. 1, 2, 4, and 8 all decide that they'd like to dance with 8. They move around 8 in a circle. If 8 moves away, the numbers follow it. What's mathematically significant about 1, 2, 4, and 8? Well, those numbers are all factors of 8, the number sitting in the big green circle. What would happen if we changed 8 to a different number between 1 and 36? For instance, what if we wanted to look at which numbers would dance with, how about 16? So I'll change 8 to a 16. And let's think about what's going to happen here. 1, 2, 4, and 8, hmm, those are factors of 8, but they're also factors of 16. So I think they're going to continue to dance, but we might have a new addition to our uh, set of dancers. Let's watch. Ah, 16 is going to enter into the fray. And now we see that the factors of 16 are 1, 2, 4, and 8, the numbers that were factors of 8, but now 16 as well. And again, I can move 16 anywhere I like, and its dancers follow it. Okay, how about we look for the factors of 20? This might be a little different. I think 1, 2, and 4, those should still be factors of 20 as well as 16. But the 8 and the 16, those no longer are going to be factors of 20. So let's see what happens to those. Oh. The 8 and the 16, those are now still, whereas some other numbers have now also joined the dance floor. And I'll move 20 over here, and we see all the factors of 20. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20, and 8 and 16 no longer move. So we can begin to ask questions like, which number from 1 to 36 is the most popular and has the most dance partners? Which numbers have the fewest dance partners? Which numbers have just two dance partners? All sorts of questions we can explore with dancing factors.